All right, everyone, welcome back. So we're going to get into our next topic here, still on the Greek world, of course. And last time we talked about geography and how geography was really important for the ancient Greeks and how as a result of their geography, you get this, you know, city-state idea, the polis, and how you had many city-states. And, you know, the focus of one of the objectives I want you to know for my students is it's not just enough to kind of know that there's these city-states. You're going to want to know what are the similarities and what are the differences, especially with Athens and Sparta. Those are the two big ones. It's also not going to be enough just to when we get to the differences, just know these are the differences. You know, the objective is to know the differences, but also know how did their differences impact the choices they made, what wars they fought, what they did, how they acted. I think making that connection is going to be really important as well. And so, you know, what I want to start with before we get into any of the differences is in this lecture, what are their similarities, right? And not just for Athens and Sparta. Remember, I said there were, you know, tons of city-states, right? And so these are things that almost all the Greek city-states had in common. So kind of just keep that in mind as we go through this first lecture. And then in a subsequent lecture, we'll focus more on Athens, stuff that's specific to Athens, another one specific to Sparta. And by the time we're done with all this, you should have a lot of information of being able to compare and contrast the two. All right, so here's our first set of key words that you, of course, always want to get down. And, you know, one thing that we'll start with what they had in common, and just to remind you where we are here, this is Sparta down here, Athens is right up here further north. One thing they had in common, of course, is language, right, which is not insignificant, you know, these city-states shared the common Greek tongue, which matters because if you don't even have that, it's really hard to have any sort of bond with one another. And so, you know, at least that is one thing they did have in common. Another important similarity that I want you to know between these Greek city-states, again, Athens and Sparta, is the Greek religion. Uh, they all shared the same polytheistic gods. They were polytheistic, right? Many gods. Uh, Zeus and, of course, you know, their major god. And you got all the other gods that they have there, um, you know, in their, in their hierarchy of religious. Um, and so, you know, they all shared, you know, those kind of things, Apollo, and then, of course, all the, the mythologies and Medusa and all those great stories that the Greeks come up with. So they did have a similar religion. The next things that I want to talk about, Acropolis, Agora, Hoplite, Phalanx, go ahead, write all those words down because I'm going to go to my next slide and I'm going to show you these things on my next slide here. So go ahead, you know, sometimes I tell my students just to pause, get the words down, and then you can kind of see it on our next slide what we're talking about here. Uh, but these are going to be some other things that the Greek city-states had. I mean, it's not so much what they had in common. I mean, I guess you could put it in what they had in common. But these are things that were typical of many Greek city-states. They had the basic functions, things you needed to function, an Acropolis, an Agora, Hoplites, Phalanx, which I'm going to explain right here in this next slide. Um, actually, I put the terms up here as well for you, as you can see. So this is just a generic map of Athens. And one of the things that pretty much most city-states have is an Acropolis, right? Now, Acropolis, when you talk about the Acropolis, you're talking about the one in Athens. What is an Acropolis? Well, it's, again, one of those things you could break down if you, if you know the words, right? Uh, you have two words, polis, which we know. Polis means city-state. Acro. And so one of the things that I also want you to get down for all my students is, again, contributions. Uh, it's a running theme in all my early Western Civ class. What contributions do we get from other civilizations that impact us today? And one of the contributions we get from the Greeks is language. A lot of the words that we use in our day-to-day -day, uh, English language come from Greek historical origins. And so polis, city-state, acro, what does the word acro mean? Well, think of words like acrophobia or acrobat. Acro means high. And so we still use that word high in our English language, acro for those words. An Acropolis simply means the high point of the city. And you can kind of see it right over here, uh, the Acropolis. What was the Acropolis used for? Well, at least the one in Athens, it was used as a place of worship, right? High up towards the, to the, to the gods. And also for uh, the Athenians, it was a good lookout spot, right? If anybody's trying to invade, that was actually the initial use of the Acropolis. It's a good lookout spot. A second thing that every single Greek city-state had was an agora, right? What's an agora? Well, the agora is further down here. And again, another example of a word we have in our English language that comes from this. 
some of you may be familiar with this word agoraphobia, right? What is agoraphobia? Well, if you know what that word means, you might guess what an agora is, right? So agoraphobia simply means fear of crowded places, fear of open places. Uh, people who have agoraphobia don't like to go outside with a lot of people. What is an agora? Well, it's in a big open place. But for the Greeks specifically, it was a marketplace. And so it was a place where the Greeks would go and buy things that you would have in their, in their you know, environment. What would be some things you would have in a Greek agora? Well, you know, I have a few things to show you here. They had olives, lots of olives. olives. Uh, from olives, they made olive oil, right? When I was in Greece, actually, um, uh, and maybe I'll show you a picture here in a second of it. I was driving around and there was this massive olive groves everywhere you go uh, because they had olives so much there. Grapes, lots of grapes. I don't have any grapes with me when I'm recording this. It's not grape season, uh, but I love, I love grapes. By the way, the best thing to do with grapes, if you ever get them, uh, put them in the freezer. Oh, they're so good, frozen grapes. It's a, it's a yummy treat. Um, another thing is fish. So here we go. So I'm uh, but fish they had and um, wine. Uh, they made wine, of course, from their grapes. Uh, so wine was a big one. Uh, they loved their wine. They loved their wine so much. They even had a god of wine named Dionysus. Uh, another thing they had is pots, lots of pots. And, you know, I won't do this here because you'll probably lose some of the understanding. But when I, I lecture in class, I actually take this pot and I throw it on the ground and it breaks into a million pieces. And students go, why do you break a piece of pot? Uh, a pot. Well, you know, you watch the next lectures and you'll understand why I break pieces of, of pottery in my class, but it'll make sense in another lecture. But I don't think there's anywhere for me to just drop this and crash it, but use your imaginations. Uh, so anyways, those are some things you want, might find in Agora, in a marketplace. So again, all Greek city-states had an Agora. Another thing that they had in common that I guess you can remember are their Greek soldiers. All Greek soldiers are called hoplites. It doesn't matter if you're in Athens, Sparta, they're all called hoplites. Uh, they're called that because they used a round wooden shield called a hoplon shield. And from there you get hoplites. If you get a whole bunch of hoplites together, you get a phalanx, right? A phalanx, a whole bunch of hoplites is a phalanx. Uh, so those terms you definitely want to know, right? Another thing most Greek city-states had are long walls, and you can actually see here on this map some of these walls that you have here. Uh, what are these walls about? Well, you know, these long walls, even here down says so this long wall. Um, these were, of course, defensive, and so that indicates that these Greek city-states were pretty militaristic, and we're going to definitely see that as we talk about more Greek lectures, that they were fighting other people, they're fighting each other, um, and so definitely walls were a big part of their civilizations as well. So these are things many of the Greek city-states had in common. So whether you're Athens, Sparta, uh, all the other little Greek city-states, which I'll mention some of them in future lectures as well, uh, those are things they all needed. So they had the same language, same gods, um, had these basic components. Um, another one that I didn't actually put up here, but definitely you want to know, uh, pride, right? No matter what Greek city state you were part of, they definitely had a lot of pride in their city state. Um, that's something to, to kind of remember as well. That becomes important a little bit later. Uh, they, 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 you know, it, whatever city state you were part of, you were really a big part of it. You know, one of the worst things that could happen to you is not death, but actually be kind of kicked out of your, your city state, uh, which we'll talk about later. So these are things that Greek city states had in common, things I definitely want you to know. Uh, real quick here, I mentioned olives. And so these are just one picture I took from my trip. And you know, I'm like, wow, look at all these olive trees everywhere. Uh, so they really did have a lot of olive trees. All right, so now we're gonna move on into our next lecture, which is kind of getting into the differences between Athens and Sparta, you know, some especially in terms of the government, and this is gonna be, we're gonna focus a lot on the government of Athens in this next lecture, uh, which will be very important, and then we're gonna talk a lot more about Sparta as well. All right, hope you're following along, hope everything's clear. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, everyone.